Amen. Glory to God. Did y'all uh, get everything on my Christmas list yet? Did y'all get my Christmas list? Oh, oh, you're online right now. I like what Joe McGee says uh, to his kids. He said, I spent a lot of money raising you. Don't be bringing me anything that fits in a box under a tree. You better get me something with a motor or uh, that has some keys attached to it. Is anybody here? <laughs> Laura says, no, we, we don't want our kids to do that. You want to be a blessing to them. Well, I want them to be a blessing to me too. <laughs> Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, at some point, right? At some point. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, don't be just sticking me in some home when I'm older. You better, you better come do this right. All right. All right, this is my sermon. Keep it down down there. All right, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Um. It, Look at these first couple of words here. It says, for by what? For by grace, you have been saved through what? Okay, so let's, let's look at this again. So for by what? Grace. Everybody say grace. Uh, it says, by grace, you have been saved through faith. So without grace, right, we cannot be saved. But I actually... By grace, through faith. Or we could say, by grace and by faith. So those two have to work together for you and I to even be saved. And how many know that is the formula right there for everything that God has for you and I coming to pass. Everything that God wants to do in our lives, amen, somebody say everything, Every single thing that God wants to do in our lives is going to happen with those two ingredients. There is, you can't beg God to do something. You can't work, uh, uh, do a bunch of works uh, for God to do something for you. This is the way that you and I receive from God in every single area of our lives. So, we could, say, we could say it this way. This is how we receive anything and everything from God with these two things. Amen. What are they? Grace. Everybody say grace. And faith. Say faith. Okay. So we've been ministering. We ministered some in, in recent uh, uh, weeks, the last several months. I'm always ministering on grace because grace has had a tremendous impact on my life amen grace as defined in the bible uh it's god's unmerited favor uh it's uh god's divine dealings with the human heart uh amen uh i love that one uh, it's god you know that's how we're saved uh most uh, everybody in this room uh, every person that's ever been born again you were lost you had you you had no desire for god even if you were raised in church you, you don't just decide, I'm going to, wow, I'm going to get on fire for God. No, it doesn't work that way. Grace comes in, and grace actually is the thing that begins to work on and in us to actually cause us to want to even be saved, amen, or to want to walk in uh, 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 the things of God, amen. Is anybody here? Glory to God. So, grace, God's unmerited favor, God's divine dealings with the human heart. Uh, it's not what I'm preaching on, but it's just a part of who I am. Amen. Uh, uh, some of you, you don't even, uh, we, a lot of people struggle with how is God working? What is God doing? Well, what is stirring in you? What is stirring in you? It's really not that complicated. Amen. Being a Christian is is it's be, being a, a real christian a new testament christian is is actually easy we're just yielding to that flow of god that's operating in our lives amen uh where is it uh, i think it's uh philippians it's god all the while effectually at work within you both the will and to do of his good pleasure it's god somebody say god say it again say god who's doing the work god's doing the work God's doing the work in me. That's called a Christian. Amen? Some of you, the Lord's stirring in you things. You're thinking about things. Come on. Nobody in this room has had an original thought. Just chalk it up for what it is. Amen? Every good thing that's stirring and operating in your life, the fact that some of you, well, the fact that all of you are sitting in this room right now, 
listening to the word of God being preached, opening your heart to the things of God, the things of the spirit. Amen. That is 100% grace. Is anybody here? That's God's goodness. Then he, his goodness opens a door in your heart to where he starts dealing with you. Amen. Did you know that grace even operates in those in the world that are unsaved and unchurched? Did you know that God's grace operates? You ever see someone? I, I was actually just talking to someone the other day. They, uh, 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 they stepped into an area of business. They were in one area of business. That door closed. Uh, uh, they, they just uh, did this thing, and all of a sudden, it opened up this whole uh, uh, door of opportunity for this individual where th they, they have done an enormous amount of business just uh, starting out this year in a completely new career of sorts, ha had never operated in that area before, but they're flowing in that thing like they've been doing it their entire life. What is that? That's grace. Amen. If you see someone that's out there, uh, for the most part, they have a gift and they're operating in that gift. That is grace. Amen. And, and, and all these graces fit together. They piece together to actually flow and function in uh, uh, um, a lot of the purposes of God. Amen. Uh, somebody, uh, if you've ever read Isaiah 45, it talks about a man named Cyrus. Has anybody ever heard of a man named Cyrus? Uh, amen. Well, it says that Cyrus actually prospered and he did a tremendous work, which actually ended up having an impact on the people of God. He was not in the covenant of God. He wasn't necessarily working in his heart for God, but he was still anointed to fulfill a purpose. Is anybody here? Hello? So what is that? It's grace. Amen. Somebody say, I love grace. Glory to God. So grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is God's divine dealings with uh, the human heart, and grace... Uh, is God's ability, which kind of they all of them work together simultaneously. Uh, but I couldn't even, I can't even get up in the morning and thank God I don't have any shoelaces today, but I can't even tie my shoes without God. Did, did you hear what I said? Hello? I can't even tie my shoes without the Lord's help. Somebody said, Pastor Darren, you're in bad shape. No, actually, I'm in good shape. Why? Because I recognize. I recognize that everything that's operating in my life that's good and flowing in a good direction, God's involved with that. Amen. And here, to move on to my actual message, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the thing of grace, how to operate and, and allow it to continue to operate in your life, you have to recognize it, uh, 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 call it uh, what it is, and then ask God for more of it. Is anybody here? So, so how, do we, how do we operate in a fuller level, a more full level of grace? We, we recognize when it's operating in our life and we give glory to God for it. Amen. Is anybody here? We, we recognize that God is flowing in our lives and we say, God, thank you for doing that. Do you know how many times consciously or unconsciously throughout uh, a given day that I will stop and acknowledge God for what he's doing in my life? Amen. It could be just the littlest thing. Amen. I, I was, uh, Laura and I were traveling uh, the other week, drove to Maine. Uh, we had a problem, uh, uh, something with the, the car uh, was messing up. I had no idea what it was. And I looked it up on YouTube. Thank you, Jesus. Looked it up on YouTube and it, uh, I called somebody and they said, yeah, they, they confirmed what the Spirit of God told me on YouTube, that it was the uh, uh, temperature uh, sensor gauge. So I drove down to the Napa store and I said, sir, I need a temperature sensor gauge. And he pulled it out and I knew what I was doing because it was flowing, boy. And then I'm sitting there. We had a problem with our tire. We, some, some, probably Laura ran over a curb somewhere, you know. These women drivers, I'll tell you what. I don't even, I don't even know what to say, you know. 
Yeah. So um, the tire all the way, we were in Virginia, I think. We had to go all the way to Maine. So the tire was leaking air pressure. So we're looking down, you know, it'd be at like 40, you know, 38, 39. Then it's down to 36 and 34. And then it got below 30. Then overnight, it's like in the low 20s, uh, you know, the, the pressure. So I go get some air in the tire. And, uh, you know, we're driving, keeping an eye on it. So we got a problem with a tire. So I'm in the middle of nowhere in, in Maine. And I'm trying to find a tire shop. So I go to this one shop. Now there, there's nobody there. Oh, my, my tire thing's broken. Uh, you know, so I give him one of those in my mind. I say, thank you for, and then I walk out and mumble for nothing. And then I uh, uh, walk out and I, I go back to the Napa store and I'm saying, I can't, I got to buy a pump. I got to find something to get this tire. We're, we're, I'm going to be parked here for a week. I'm going to have a flat tire. We ain't getting out of here, you know? So I, I'm in the Napa store and all of a sudden, uh, I'm asking the gentleman that's waiting on me. I said, sir, do you know anywhere there is a tire shop? And the guy begins to tell me. He says, actually, no, there's nothing around here. Uh, the, next tire, the, the, the closest tire shop and dealer is 30 miles away. So he said, as a matter of fact, I just blew a tire this morning. And I, I had to go and, you know, get, do whatever, and I had to buy a new tire, et cetera. So as this guy's telling me this story, all of a sudden, there's a gentleman behind me in the line at the Napa store. He's standing behind me in the line, and all of a sudden, I hear this booming voice behind me start talking to the, 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 the clerk at the Napa store. And he, he says this. He's like, well, I can see you're a real big proponent of local business. And he called the guy's name out. So I turn around and there's this like big, tall guy standing behind me. He looked like a, one of the guys from the East Coast, West Coast Choppers, you know, show. And I turn around, I'm thinking, holy cow. So he starts getting into it with the clerk. And he says this. He said, my business is the largest tire dealer in the state of Maine. And I am in this town. And he said this, I bet you didn't know that to the clerk. And the guy said, no, I didn't. I didn't. Know. The guy's starting to get a little nervous now because this guy's about twice his size. And I think he'd just look at him and the guy would follow him. He said, no, the guy, the clerk said, no, I, I knew you were a, a, a battery dealer or something. He said, then he said something else. These guys are literally getting into it and I'm standing in the middle of them. But here's the cool thing about it. All of a sudden, the guy behind me, the, the, he says, I am the number one tire distributor in the state of Maine. And I turn around. And I said, Lord, do we have a little favor flowing right here? What are the odds of I'm standing in the line at that exact moment, and I have a tire problem, and I can't find someone to fix my tire, and the number one tire dealer in the state of Maine in this particular brand is standing behind me? What is that called? So what did I do? I, I, I turned to the guy. I said, hey, uh, is there anything you can do? You know, uh, he said, I'll tell you what, follow just my store's right down around the corner, blah, blah. He said, I'll meet you over there. I'm super busy, but I'll squeeze you in. I get there. We pull in. He pulls in right behind me. He takes my truck, uh, fixes the tire, amen, gives me a bill for $25, and we went on down the road, Okay. Now, how many, now, I left that place, and that whole day, you know what I did? I said this under my breath, out of my heart. I said, thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said, no, that was just, that just happened. No, that just doesn't happen. And it ain't going to happen for you if you don't acknowledge him. I mean, oh, God knew that man was going to be at that store, and he led me to that store right at the moment that guy was there. What do you call that, Pastor Aaron? I call that favor. Amen. And it just happens. It just happens all the time. Glory to God. But my point is we got to acknowledge it. Amen. So God's grace is God's unmerited favor, God's divine dealings with the human heart. Some of you, you better write this down and you better remember it and you better put it somewhere where you'll see it. What is stirring in you? What's stirring in you? Right? What are you thinking about? Like, what's flowing in you? Man, some of you, I've said this a thousand times in the last ten years. Maybe not that many, but a number of times. I've said, God's dealing with people about starting businesses, about different things, about stepping out. But, but we're not acknowledging that. What do you got to do? Well, you got to do what the next thing is here. 
Amen. What do you got to do? You got to do that. What the next part of the scripture says. See, we have grace. Everybody say grace. grace. We have grace. Grace is flowing. Amen. Grace is flowing. What Laura's talking about, sowing financial seed. That is a gift from God for you and I to have the opportunities to sow our finances into the kingdom of God. And I know the unrenewed mind does not understand that. That's why we have to yield to our spirit, man. Amen. Laura's, Laura's so right, man. The Lord would deal with us before we ever had children. We were sowing financial seeds for our children's future. Why? Because the, because the, the Lord would give us those opportunities. I was telling a pastor uh, uh, just a couple of days ago, I said, the, um, the Lord uh, in the last five years, Laura and I are just, we're sowers, but the Lord had given us a supernatural door. This is grace. Everybody say grace. grace. We, had, we had opportunities to be in a, 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 a larger number of corporate meetings in different locations in the United States for a series of four or five years. And in those meetings, the Lord would begin to deal with Laura and I both about sowing some financial seeds. Now, what, now follow me here. I'm not talking about money, okay? Listen to what I'm talking about. What was that? What was happening there? Grace. What do you mean, Pastor Aaron? I thought, well, you're just sitting there and, oh, I'm just going to, you know, give a few few dollars here or there or whatever. No, we don't look at it like that. That's natural. When we're sitting in a place and all of a sudden something in my heart says, you need to sow. And I'll turn to Laura and she'll say, what are you stirring about? And I say, I'm thinking this. And, and Laura's like, I'm thinking the same thing. We, we hit it on the, uh, we, we come together in agreement about 90% of the time. On some of the times, Laura's actually wants to be, she's more generous than I would want to be. On other times, I'll, I'll, I'm maybe feeling a little bit more generous that day, but we'll come into agreement probably 90% of the time. What is that? Is anybody here? What is that? It's grace. Okay? What is it? Even in, in physical things, uh, health issues, every now and then I, I've been you know, whatever, and I'll have a, an inclination. I need to call this particular doctor. I need to call this doctor. I heard, you know, whatever, something's stirring in me. See, I don't just take anything. It's not, it's not just a thought, okay? If you're flowing with the Lord, the Spirit of God's in you, I had this thought, you reach out to this doctor. I put it off for a year. This is probably three or four years ago. All of a sudden, I, I get this stirring, and, and it was about a year. Then I kind of had a little bit more of an urgency about it. And I said, I, I, I really feel like I'm supposed to reach out to this doctor. Well, I did, and, and it really, it, over the course of the, the next, you know, whatever, six months to a year, it really had a tremendous impact on my overall health to go this route. What was that? Was that Darren just having a good idea? No, I ain't got no good ideas. I ain't got no good ideas. What was that? That was grace. Okay, now, grace, put the Ephesians 2 back up. And get me some water and turn the air condition on. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Excuse me for a minute. Excuse me for a minute. <laughs> Ephesians 2.8, for by what? Grace, you have been saved through faith. So, grace... Everybody say grace. grace. Grace is operating. It's always operating. The more you recognize, acknowledge, give God the glory for it, the more it will increase in your life. I'm talking in, I'm sitting down here this morning every day, man. I'm just, I'm thinking about this. God, the grace of God can cause and will cause things to happen in our lives if we just allow it to operate. I mean, the Lord spoke to me on, on several occasions, just inward impressions, that he can take every area of my life and bring it into an absolute place of fulfillment by his grace. Amen. What is that? His favor? His de dealing with my heart? And then his ability. Those three things make up one word, grace. God's favor, 
God's de dealing with my heart and God's ability. God said to me, I can, I can cause every area in your life to come into a place of absolute fullness and completeness. God, God can take you. He can get you there physically. I'm talking about it, your physical health. Come on, folks. We're the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We should not be just reliant on doctors or medical science. And the Lord, and I, I have struggled in the health arena for many, many, many years. I'm telling you, remember I said a while back, if you need a health nutrition plan, just come see me. I know every single one of them. I've been on every single one of them. I've taken every supplement you can find under the sun. And the Lord started dealing with me and saying, if you want to live that way where you're reliant on those things, then you're not really opening yourself up to me. Because the Lord said to me, I can take you there with my grace. That doesn't mean you sit around and do nothing, but that means you allow that grace. I mean, let me just declare this over you today because somebody needs to hear it. Grace can take you to a place where you are walking in total uh, what's the word? Completeness. Uh, physically is a big area for us. Okay? He can do the same financially. Is anybody here? God can fix your finances and take you up to the next level. Amen. He, thank you, sir. He can do it. Somebody say, he can do it. God can do that. How? By grace. His favor... Am I talking to any Christians this morning? Hello? God can do it. But you got to recognize that he can do it. And it's the old adage that says, if you're working, he's not. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about doing things. I'm talking about working in your own strength and ability. If you're doing it, he's not. Which means you have to step back and say, I say it this way. Favor is flowing somewhere. I just need to find out where. If you're not prospering where you are at a particular job or place, maybe that's not where God wants you to be. Well, maybe you're paying your bills, but you're struggling just staying ahead of the game. Maybe you're not where you're supposed to be because grace or favor is flowing somewhere. Because if it's not, then, then God's not flowing and God's not God. No, it, it's like we've got to get ourselves into the flow of grace. Is anybody here? And God, when we get in that flow, God can perfect your, your, your health, your finances. What about things like your marriage? Any, anybody, Pastor Frank mentioned last week about the book he wrote, or wrestling with people. Do you ever wrestle with your kids? Has anybody ever wanted... <laughs> I can't put it that way. It's a different day, you know. Did you ever just, you know, sit there and you're like, oh, with your kids, right? No, oh, sorry, open hand. You're, I'm, I'm just, oh, you know, whatever. I mean, there's only so much you can do in... Oh. I got some knots on the back of my head still from where my mama popped me with them all them rings she's got on her hand. If it, if it, if it could have got done that way, then, you know, a lot of us would be a lot further along. But it just don't come through that way. How I many you know when you take your hand off of something, when you, your, your parents, when you take your hand off of your children and you, you give them to the Lord and you say, Lord, you work on them. I mean, oh, that's when stuff starts happening because you can't do it. You can't do it in your own ability, in your strength. Is anybody here? So God can perfect all those areas. He can perfect, uh, you know, what you're doing in your career. He can perfect and build up things. Uh, remember I told the story about the businessman that was going bankrupt, or so his accountant said, and he stood in front of his accountant and said, have you not learned anything from being around me all these years? He said, what do you mean? You're going under. He said, I'm not going under. I'm in partnership with God. 
And he said, on top of that, you're fired. He fired his accountant. That guy, his business went from a national company to a global company, and he broke through the barrier. What was it because? Because he recognized where his, uh, that, 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 uh, that source came from. It was from the Lord. Somebody say grace. Now, let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Then I want to get over a couple, couple quick scriptures here. Oh, man, let me get a little bit of this. 2 Corinthians. Mm -mm -mm. There it goes. Chapter 5, verse 7, it says this. Anybody ever seen this verse before? We walk by what? We walk by. Somebody say, I walk by faith. Say it again. I walk by faith. Say it one more time. I walk by faith. Do you? Do you? Because it says here, we walk by faith, not by sight. So there's two different ways that you and I can walk. We can either walk by faith. Or we can walk by sight. Or let's say it a different way. We can walk by what we believe in God. Or we, we can walk by what we see and are experiencing in the natural realm. It says sight. We can, there's two ways to walk. You can either walk by what you believe. Or you can walk by what you're seeing or experiencing in the natural. But Paul says here, we walk by Faith. What, what is faith? Faith is what we believe. Faith is what we believe. Where do you get faith? You hear from God. Is anybody here? So I want you to think about this for a second. Which one are you and I doing? Are we walking by what God said? Hello? Laura, I love what Laura said when this whole Israel... Palestinian thing broke out actually I think I said it to her and she stole it and took credit for it but I said it's not a complicated situation I don't even have to think about it the only thing I got to find out is what does God say because that's what I'm called to live by I'm called to live by faith in what God said I mean God's word has a lot to say about that that particular subject but how many know the news networks also have a lot to say about it how many know social media? Everybody with the social media degree has a lot to say about that. Right? Uh, of issues of uh, uh, sexual morality. How many know the world has a lot of things to say about everything? Right? But God also has a lot to say about it. So if we're going to walk by faith, we're going to walk by what God said. If we're going to walk by sight, we're probably going to walk by what the world's saying. Is anybody here? In areas of health and finances, all these parenting, marriage, there's a way to live by, the, by what the natural order of things is, and then there's a way to live by and base our lives according to what God said. Is anybody here? It's really not that complicated. I will, I, 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 it's just so dumb. I cannot lean or pick a uh, whatever political persuasion it is if it goes against what God said, it's not that hard, folks. Somebody said, you about getting political? No, there's nothing political about it. There ain't nothing political about it. That's what the devil's trying to do, get the church to be quiet about everything. There ain't nothing political about none of that. I'm going with what God said, period. It's not that hard, right? Somebody said, you, you trying to offend somebody? No, I ain't offending nobody. I'm just saying, I'm going. Let me say it this way. You do what you want to do but as for me and my house we're going to go with what god said well what did god say well don't you think it's about time we found out let's find out what god said about that well, what about marriage uh dr phil said this i don't care what dr phil said what did god say what did god say because th let me tell you the lines the the gray area is just get it's going to become one big area and you're going to have this little tiny area over here in these last days that says this is what God said and everybody's gonna be in the gray area except for the ones that say I'm going with God and let me tell you it doesn't take a very like Forrest Gump said I may not be a smart man but I do know this God cannot lie and he's never been defeated you can go with the gray if you want 
but you'd probably be exercising more wisdom if you actually went with what God said. You can go with what your political stuff says, but you'd probably be a little bit wiser if you found out what God said about that and went with that. It's not that hard, folks. You can do your marriage and parenting the way that whatever the world's doing it, or you can find out what God said and you can go in that. Because God will never fail. He'll never be defeated. He'll never lie. And he'll never let you down. Is anybody here? So when we know what God said and we believe it, now we're operating in the second area, which is what? Faith. So we've got to have the grace, but if you never mix grace with faith. Now, faith, when we've heard from God, we step out into action. Is anybody here? When we, when we believe God, that should look like something. Hello? When we've heard from God, the, our our actions should reflect what our inner conviction is because some of us, just people in general, we can have a conviction in or from the Lord, which is faith, but then when we never act on it, then the Bible says that faith, it's almost as if you didn't have any faith at all because faith unacted upon is dead meaning it's not producing anything. So when, we, when grace has led us to the place where now we have a genuine conviction in an area in what God said, that's faith. Everybody say faith. When we have faith, now we've got to have this thing called action. When there's a genuine faith that has been established, there's got to be action. I listen to this, and I've listened to it dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Uh, Kenneth Hagin has a series called The ABCs of Faith. I've I, I, I listened to it probably all. I actually have it in the car, uh, some of the different messages in there on a thumb drive, and it just plays. Every time you get in the car, it plays. So you, you're hearing it every, every single day. Every time you're in the car, I'm hearing Kenneth Hagin talk about faith. Well, anyway, he tells a story about, you know, he was uh, on the, the, he was a teenager, and he was uh, sick. He was, uh, had a deformed heart. He was born extremely premature, had all kinds of issues, a deformed heart. He had an incurable blood disease. Uh, he was paralyzed and he's just laying there on the bed, getting ready to die. Matter of fact, the doctor, the doctor came to him and said, son, just, just stay ready to go to heaven. Just stay ready. Cause you're going to be going anytime. There's nothing medical science can do for your condition. So he looks up this uh, verse. If you could put up Mark 11, 22 through 24, he, he, he got his Bible, his grandma's Bible, he said, and he's just a teenager, 16 years old. And he read through, uh, he said, he, he figured since the doctor said he wasn't going to live long, he saw that there was an Old Testament and a New Testament. He said, well, since I don't have that long to live, I better start with the New. It's got to be something in the New that, you know, you know what I'm saying. So he started with Matthew, read Matthew, then he read Mark, and he got to this verse in Mark and it says this. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Everybody say faith. Okay, he, had, he read this. Have faith in God. Then he read verse 23. And said, verse 23 said, for surely I say to you, does anybody want to learn anything? Does anybody want to be able to receive from God? Okay, well, this is, I'm telling you how right now. He said, surely I say to you, whoever says, this is Jesus speaking in Mark. He's speaking to the disciples. He just cursed the fig tree the day before. They're walking by the fig tree. He see the fig trees dried up from the roots. Read it for yourself later. Uh, he says to his, his disciples, this, how this works is you've got to have faith in God. And then he said to them, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. Okay, so he read that, then he read this, verse 24. Therefore, Jesus still speaking, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Okay, keep this verse up there. So, Kenneth Hagen, teenager, te just a teenager, laying on the bed, paralyzed heart, I mean, I'm sorry, deformed heart, paralyzed body, and incurable blood disease. He's going to die. And he actually, he actually did, if you know his testimony, he did die three times on the bed, left his body anyway. So he's now, 
he's looking at this. He got born again when he's on that deathbed, basically. And he's looking at this verse. And every day is a struggle. In the morning, he could speak a little bit. The rest, by the end of the halfway through the day, he's paralyzed completely. He can't even speak. People are bathing him. He barely has enough. He gets up in the morning. He's able to scoot through a couple of pages of the Bible and read. But he said this. He said something in his spirit in here, grace. This is grace. Somebody say grace. This is, see, see, this is how this works. He didn't get this on his own. This is how grace works. He said something in here in his spirit, man, told him that his answer was in Mark 11, 23 and 24. Something in here told him that. So he said on a couple of occasions, one time he stayed up all night long reading this verse over and over again. He said it on one night. He must have read it through a thousand times, speaking this verse out loud. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Therefore, I say to you, thousand times. Over a thousand times, he said. And then he said, all of a sudden, it dawned on him. He saw it. That's grace, by the way. Grace brings revelation. You just don't get it on your own. There's a grace that's operating. That's why a lot of Bible teachers, even pastors and ministers, are dangerous. Because they're, they're taking the scriptures and they're only operating in a mental ability. That's what's so dangerous. You can sit under a pastor and he'll put you in a such bondage with his preaching and teaching. I see him on some on, on, on YouTube and Facebook, whatever. When I hear him, I, I turn it off. I can't allow that stuff to go into my heart. It's wrong. They, they're saying the verse, but there's no spirit of revelation in God or spirit of love that's coming out of them. It doesn't, they can be given the verse, but there's zero, there's zero connection in it to the things of God. So... He got a revelation reading this verse. All of a sudden, he said the eyes of his understanding were open, and he saw it. Mark eleven twenty four. He saw it. He said, I saw that when I prayed for my healing. Remember, he's paralyzed, deformed heart, incurable blood disease. He said, I realized that when I prayed and asked for my healing in those three areas, I had to believe at that moment that I have received my healing. Now, I'm talking about healing because that's his example, but this works in every area. He said, I realized by revelation, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see that when I prayed for my healing, I had to believe at that moment when I prayed that I have believed that I have received my healing. And he said, when I get in that place, then I will have my healing. So he said that he, he, he did this and it, when he got the revelation of it. Now he's months and months and months, I don't know how many, 15, 16 months in the, in, on this bed. And he said, when he got the revelation of it by the Holy Spirit, he said this. He said, I declare right now that I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. He said, I believe that I receive healing for this deformed heart. He said, I believe that I receive healing for this paralyzed body. He said, I believe that I receive healing for this incurable blood disease. I believe that I receive my healing right now in Jesus' name. And then he said he announced to the nobody in the room, he said, I declare to the Lord Jesus Christ, to every devil that's present and every angel that's present. He said, I declare that I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I believe that I receive it now. Now, he said nothing had changed. No symptom had left. Nothing in his body had changed. But he, something happened in here. He believed that he had received those, that healing for those three areas. So then, he says this. The Holy Spirit speaks to him a few minutes after this and says this. Healed people ought to be out of bed at 10.30 in the morning. So he said this, well, I believe I'm healed, so I'm getting out of this bed. He's paralyzed. He said he had a little bit of strength in his arms. And he said he did this. 
He pulled, he grabbed the bedpost. He pulled himself up with what strength he had. He said he took his paralyzed legs and he grabbed them with his arms and he pushed dropped his legs off the side of the bed. He said it was like two sacks of potatoes hit the ground. There's no moot feeling in his legs. And he said, he said it again, I believe that I've received healing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And he said about that moment, something came down, struck him on top of the head. And he said the healing power of God began to flow all through his body. He said the feeling came into his legs. He said within just a moment, he's standing in the room, walking around, completely healed. Now, now, how did that happen? Oh, now here's where we're going to get, here, here's where we get in on some of our dysfunctional doctrine. Well, if God's going to do it, he's going to do it. No, he's not. If God, it's going to be God, it's going to do, he's going to do it in his timing. No, it doesn't really work that way. This is what he said. He said, however many, 16 months on this bed, couldn't move. He had to take it by faith. Is anybody here? He had to take it by faith. Yeah, but nothing changed when he, when he did it. Yeah, but he took it by faith. If it didn't come in those moments, it would have come that night. If it didn't come that night, it would have come the next day. If it didn't come the next day, it would have come within a week. If it didn't come within a week, it would have come in a month. If it didn't come in a month, it would have come in a year. He believed that he received healing from those three things. He believed that he received it. Somebody said, this sounds like some, some Christian science stuff. Well, if you think Mark eleven twenty four 24 is Christian science, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. And when I listened to this the other day, that little blip in the car when I was driving, I said this out loud to myself. I said, nobody in the body of Christ knows how to do this. We all pray. We all love God. We all can do some good things in God. But not many people in the body of Christ know how to actually live and walk by faith. Is anybody here? Somebody said, Pastor Aaron, have you done this? Or is this just Kenneth Hagin's testimony? Brother, sister, I've done it. I've laid hands on my own self dozens of times over the years. I've laid hands on myself and I say, I command every symptom, lying symptom to leave my body in the name of Jesus. Somebody said, did they leave? A lot of times they left instantaneously. Other times it took minutes or a few hours. Sometimes it would take days. And even if if those symptoms never left my body, I still would position myself and say, I believe that my body is well. Is anybody here? Why? What is that called? It's called faith. And here's the bottom line of faith. Here's the bottom line. And this is what Kenneth Hagin, the Lord spoke to him after this, these instances in his early life as a teenager. And then he got called to ministry and all that. He said this. He wrote this in his grandmother's um, Bible. And I've said this dozens of times. He wrote this in the leaflet of his Bible. He said, if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. What is that? That's faith. That's faith. I heard another story uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin told about uh, finances. And the Lord's been dealing with me about this for years for this church. And I have yet to step into it. He said that he got a hold of this when it came to finances. And he said the Lord really spoke to him, ministered to him about finances. He was traveling on the road. Was, he didn't have enough money. He was struggling. And he said he sought the Lord about it two, three days. He wrote a book about it, How God Taught Me About Prosperity. And it's one of the best little mini books you'd ever read in your life. You could, if I were every person here, I'd get that book on wherever, Amazon, buy it on Kindle. It's probably 99 cents. I'd read that thing a thousand times until I got it and started operating in it. That's what the Lord's been telling me to do. But he said, uh, he's traveling, and he said the Lord dealt with him, gave him this thing from Scripture, told him how to actually operate in the financial arenas. So he did. And he said this. He, he, he would ask God for what he needed. He was a traveling minister. He'd go. He said, I need $150 a week, whatever it was, way back when. And he said he'd, he'd claim that money. He'd claim that money. He said, I believe, just like he got healed, he said, I believe I received that $150 for this week. He said, I believe I receive it. And then he said, 
had a revelation from the Lord, released the ministering angels to go and gather those resources and bring them to you. And he did that. Somebody said, does that all that work? Well, it worked for him. He did pretty good. He did pretty good for himself. The Lord spoke to me and said, Darren, my people do it every way except for the way that I told them to do it. And that's a, that's, that statement's more true than you and I would like to admit. We're doing it every way except for which the way God laid it out for us to do. We'll, reach, we'll try to reach the loss every way but the, how the Lord told us to do it. We'll try to build a church every way except for the ways that God told us to do it in Scripture. But if the Lord spoke to me. He said, if you do it my way, you'll be blessed beyond your wildest imaginations. So we got to do it his way. His way is not burdensome or heavy. His, his, his burden's light. His yoke is easy. We got to come to him and learn how he operates. You're going to be spending, most of us are going to spend our entire lives working for money. And all the while, God's got a plan in the scripture to prosper us. But we, we either don't know it or we're not doing what we know. That's, that's what the Lord was saying to me. People are doing it. My people are doing it every way except for the way that I told them to do it. So Kenneth Hagin got a hold of this revelation. He started operating. He claimed that money. Well, he's in a church meeting. This is what faith looks like. He's in a church meeting. He claimed this money. And Kenneth Hagin knew this. God cannot lie. If he told me to do this, it works. If it didn't work, it's because I didn't do something right. So he claimed the $150. He said he went to this church he had been to before. The pastor asked him, what's your budget? And he said, I'm not, don't worry about my budget. God takes care of me, blah, blah, blah. You know how pastors are. They, you know, people, they want to know what they're going to have to be into you for. You know, if you've got certain needs, they want to try to help you, you know. So he said, I'm not, don't worry about my budget. Finally, the pastor wore him out and pleaded with him, tell me what your budget is. So he said, my budget's $150 a week. He said, the pastor almost fell off his chair onto the floor. He said, $150 a week. He said, if the Lord Jesus Christ himself were here preaching, he wouldn't get $150. He said, the best evangelist we've ever had, nationally known evangelist, the best offering he ever got was $90 here. This is in 1950. That's probably a lot of money, right? So he said, told the pastor, don't worry about it. Just stay in neutral. Don't even think about it. God's going to take care of me. Anyway, long, long, long story short. He gets through the meetings. He had what came in in the offering was like $150 something dollars. He said, the pastor said, I, I am, could not believe it even, if I, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. This is the biggest miracle that we've ever seen in this church financially. Well, who did that? Did Kenneth Hagin do that? No. Yes, he did have a part to play. God produced the result. Kenneth Hagin released his faith. All this was operating in the realm of grace. Folks, we can operate at higher levels. We can operate at higher levels of, of living if we choose to operate in those two things, grace and faith. Everybody say grace and faith. Amen. So on the one instance, he was, he was doing this again in another place, and he said he was short. They brought the offering to him, and he was like, I don't know, 10 or $15 short. So he tells the, the pastor, the secretary, whoever's there with him, count the offering again. Something's something somebody miscounted because he this is what faith looks like he knew god was going to produce what he believed for see you've got to believe that you receive it before you have it hello when laura and i she was referencing about our house being paid off the lord spoke to me and said get every debt that you have the the you know the papers of it put it in a folder lay your hands on it and command those debts to be paid for in full Somebody said, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard or the most foolish thing. Think what you want. But within two to three years, I was completely debt free. And it wasn't because of my hand. The Lord produced it. Did you hear what I said? I, my, 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 I was able to pay my mortgage off, not because of something Darren did, because I did what the Lord told me to do. I laid my hand, I got, the, got those bills. And then the Lord speaks to me and said, your biggest debt is not in here. I said, Lord, as soon as he said it, I knew what he was talking about. I didn't have my mortgage in there. So I went right into the house. I got a hold of Laura. I said, Laura, where's a copy of our mortgage payment thing, or whatever it's called? She said, I'll go, I'll go get it. So we put, I put it in the folder. We laid hands on that thing. I said, I command every one of these debts. I call them paid in the name of Jesus. Somebody again is thinking, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, 
It's like the lady that was running out of gas on the top of a mountain and she got out, laid hands on the side of her car and said, you're going to make it to the gas station in the name of Jesus. She's out of gas. She got in that car, crunk it up, drove another 20, 30 miles to the gas station and got some gas. Somebody said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, guess what? You're behind and still be sitting on the mountain out of gas. So believe what you want, folks. And guess what? You're going to have for what you're believing for. So he said they're counting the offering, $136, whatever it was, $14 short. He said, count it again. Made them count it again. He said, no, no, something's wrong. All of a sudden, this is a whole long, drawn-out story. He said, somebody comes in another door in the church and says, oh, Brother Hagen, I forgot to give you your book table money. This was turned in. It was enough money, and it went over the $150 mark. What was that? That's faith. He got, exactly for what, he got exactly what he believed for. Amen. Is anybody here? Now, this, this is a, maybe a little bit, you know, whatever. Some people have never heard this. Some people have heard it a lot, but don't believe it. You know, some people haven't heard this at all. Some people have heard it a lot and don't believe it still. And can I be honest with you? I'll tell you a little, I'll tell on myself a little bit. I've listened to some of these sermons dozens and dozens of times. 20, 20, over 25 years I've been listening to this. Sowing this message into my heart. Faith. Grace. One thing I have learned is that what the Bible speaks of in the parable of the sower, uh, it says that the word of God is a seed. Everybody say a seed. Everybody knows if you plant a seed in your garden, it's not just going to, you don't have a harvest the next day, right? What has to happen? The seed has to be tended to, has to be watered, has to be given time to grow. It needs sunlight. It needs the right care and conditions, etc. But eventually that seed will produce what it was designed to produce. Well, the word of God sown in our heart is a seed. That's what Jesus said. So some of you, you hear it. It, it, it springs up with joy, whatever, when persecution comes, you know, or challenges, you know, you let go of that seed and then it never produces anything. But the key to this stuff working is you just got to keep hearing it and hearing it. It waters itself. And then before long, you're, you're, you got results where you can actually receive anything from God. Did you know God can do anything? But it's not an issue of God doing it. It's an issue of can we believe? Now, somebody said, oh, this is that old burdensome message of faith. Now, faith works. <laughs> faith in God works. Amen. I've already seen it too many times. I- I've seen it personally too many times. Somebody say it works. It works. Amen. So l- look at these verses. Uh, I'm-, I'm closing out here. Mark eleven twenty two 22 again. So you got to have grace. You can't do it without grace. You can't work in this enough to get it to work for you. It doesn't work like that. You've got to have God involved. Amen? If you're struggling to try to produce a result in this, there's no grace operating. Amen? You've got to have grace. Somebody say grace. So God's got to be involved fully in the process, and you've got to acknowledge him in the process. But then, as this, this, this faith is... Let, let me just say it this way. God calls people to churches. Okay, God assigns you where you're supposed to be. You don't pick your church. This ain't no church shopping thing. If you're called here, God put you here, planted you here. You need to get, allow yourself to be planted. But let me tell you this. This is a faith church. Okay? This is a faith church. You, you may could look for uh, 100 miles in radius and not find a faith church. What, is, what, is it, what does a faith church look like? We believe what God said. That's what a faith church is. And we act on what God said. So we've been around much of the charismatic church. They've been praying for a move of God and thank God for it. Like Laura said, prayer does open up and and it, it is the foundational work of the church and the continuing powerhouse of God's move in the earth. We can't do it without prayer, but it's got to be prayer in grace and faith. But we can pray for a move of God. It's not It's not coming. It's not coming until you and I yield to grace and we begin to operate by faith. 
Can I prophesy over you today or just share a glimpse of what the Lord's been saying? We're not here to have we're not here to have a church service. We're not here to build a church even. We're here to take over. Somebody might from the outside, somebody in this room might hear that and not like it. Oh, that's arrogant. No, it's not. Maybe there's just something you haven't seen yet in God or in the scriptures. I'm called here. We're called here together to actually turn the devil's kingdom upside down. We're not here to just come to church and then go back into the world. We're actually here to establish the kingdom. Hello? So we need grace, and then we've got to operate by faith. Well, what is faith? Well, what did God say? What has God spoken to us? And more importantly, what has God spoken to you? Because you got to allow that grace to operate, but then when God speaks to you, you've got to get that in your heart, and you've got to step out and do it. It's, God's not going to do it for you. We, some of us will, will, will lay there and just say, I'm waiting on God to do it. No, he's not going to do it. That's why the Lord spoke to Kenneth Hagin and said, go teach my people faith. As if to say to me, there's not a lot of people that know how to do this. you got to go teach them how to walk by faith. So, bow your heads this morning. Lord, I, we're positioned, we positioned ourselves. I'm just going to tell you flat out. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.13, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as written, we believe, therefore we speak. Uh, they, they believe and therefore spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. I'm declaring, uh, amen. Glory to God. There, 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 there will be a revolution in this place. Amen. We've been declaring this. There will be a move of God among young people. Oh, it'll be the most powerful thing you've ever seen. We've declared by the Spirit of God uh, that a move of God will happen in this region. People from all over the country and the world will come here. Ministers will come. Well-known ministers will come not to preach. They'll come to sit and receive. There will be a move of God here economically that the Spirit of God spoke and said, this will be known as another Silicon Valley. What is that? It's a place of such tremendous wealth, innovation, creativity it's happening the lord said it so what do i do i believe god if god said it i believe it that settles it i i i i get weary of, of saying it if you're stirred in the area of business and finance you should stop what you're doing and actually s separate yourself from your daily grind of being on a hamster wheel and you should begin to seek the lord let the grace of god flow in your life Hear from God. Step out. I'll tell you, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's time for the taking. Amen. We've been declaring. I've been declaring. Uh, I'll just say what the Lord said. It don't bother me none. But uh, we, uh, we've we been believing God that every single uh, leader here, staff member, what have you, uh, that we're, gonna, we're believing God we're going to pay every single person's debt off. Amen. You, if you're smart, you'd say, I'm in agreement with that, Pastor Darren. You need, what does that mean? Even your big debts. Amen. Old Robert said one time, God can't build, his, the Lord spoke to him and said, I can't build my kingdom on people that are sick and broke. So what are we going to do? We're going to let grace operate and we're going to walk in total healing and abundance of prosperity. And then we're going to do and fulfill. Folks, the end is near. It's, it's, we're, we're, we're out of the marathon mode. We're in a sprint mode now. Like Laura prophesied by the Spirit of God, you better get your running shoes on because we're getting ready to run. The Lord said, I'm going to do such a quick work, it's going to make your head spin. It's not even going to be fair what God does. It's not even going to be fair. It's going to be a clean sweep. He's going to come in. He's going he's to mop the floor with the devil. The kingdom of darkness is going to be put out of business. Mark my words and see it. Amen. Craig Sloan prophesied over here, and it's a word of the Lord. He said that Melody Church was going to be the leading creator of jobs in this region. Leading creator of jobs. What does that mean? So what am I saying? What am I saying? What are you saying, Pastor Aaron? I'm saying if God said it, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. So now what I'm doing is I'm positioning myself to take the land. I'm positioning myself. Everybody stand up on your feet. Come on, I'm positioning myself to take the land. I'm not sitting back anymore. I'm not waiting on God. 
Somebody came to the other day and said, Pastor Aaron, I heard what you've been, the Holy Spirit's been saying. It's time to take. It's time to take. I want you to begin to declare just for the next moment or two. I want you to declare some things out of your own mouth, some things that you're taking and walking in. Some of you, you could follow suit in that testimony. God, I've done it. I can't t- count how many times I've done it. Some of you need to lay hands on your own body this morning. You need to declare, I believe that I receive healing. I take my healing now. I believe that I receive healing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Glory to God. You need to declare, I'm not just sitting back waiting. No, I'm going to take my, I'm going to possess my possessions. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, come on. It's time for the taking. Glory to God. It's time for taking. It's not time for sitting. Hallelujah. It's time for taking. Come on. Somebody just in the spirit, man, just reach out right now. Uh, I love what somebody said that you got to put the sickle of faith in. You got to put the harvest, uh, the combine of faith out there, and you got to go out there and reap what God has already said. Come on. The Lord prophesied over this place and said there'll be corporate airplanes coming and going from this place. What does that signify? There's a lot of, there's a lot of wealth moving in this region right now. The Lord prophesied and spoke by the Spirit one uh, night that the angel armies have been amassing themselves in this region to, to, to carry out, oh, to carry out and execute, uh, what the, 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 the children of God, the saints of God, are declaring glory to God as the Lord said to the Israelites as I've heard you in my in my hearing say I will do exactly what I've heard you say in my hearing what does that mean those angel armies are here they're here prepared to launch out and to take what you command them to do you're not the producer you're the believer It ain't about what you can do. It's about what you can believe that God can do. Come on, somebody say, I'm taking. I'm taking. I'm taking what's mine. Glory to God. My God. Oh, somebody take it right now. Hallelujah. Somebody step out. I believe the Lord's speaking to some hearts right now. There's some vision stirring. There's some words that have been spoken. Glory to God. Oh. Come on, somebody, stir your faith up. Stir up your faith this morning. Hallelujah. Your children's futures lie in the balance right now in this moment. Hallelujah. The the plan, the plan, come on. You press in and you lay hold on that. You take that. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Everybody say this with me. Say, I believe that Jesus is Lord. He's my Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. God is my father and I'm his child. Glory to God. Thank God for it. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. 